Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, briefing video. Uh, so we're going to be going through assessment 2 for BSS 027-2, that's the Operations and Project Management Unit for uh, both Business Studies students or Pathways uh, and uh, Airport and Aviation Management students. Uh, so everyone should have finished uh, assessment 1 by now. Uh, so that assessment uh, looked at analysing the LTR case study, which is Luton Town Residences uh, case study, and you were asked to provide two portfolio papers and analysis of the case study. Uh, so identifying and, and discussing the issues in the case study, uh, and secondly, a business case for a project to resolve at least some of the issues in the case study. Uh, so if you choose to, you can continue with uh, the solution you identified and discussed in the business case, uh, but you're not required to. Uh, so either by looking at the feedback for the first assessment, or if you simply choose, you know, you've, you've found a more interesting solution, perhaps uh, you can change uh, your, your solution for assessment two. Um, there's no requirement that you actually stick to what you've discussed in assessment one. Uh, it does mean, however, that you don't have to uh, get to grips with a brand new case study or absorb new information. You can simply carry on uh, your your work from assessment one uh, using the same body of knowledge you've developed uh, through the first assessment. Uh, so we're going to look at four distinct things here. We're going to examine the assessment task to understand what's being asked of us. Uh, we're going to take a look through the information that we should be uh, using in order to support our work, both academic and non-academic sources of information. Uh, and then because the assessment split into two, we're going to look at both the overall structure for the individual report, uh, but also specifically uh, the structure we should use to address question one and then the structure we should use to address question two. So if we start uh, by just looking at the top of the assessment brief, uh, so unlike assessment one, which was a portfolio, so a, a combination of different portfolio papers, uh, this is a standard individual report. So because this is obviously a business school, we're going to be using the business report format. Uh, there is uh, information on what a business report should look like, uh, both in the academic guide, which you'll find on the Brio show, uh, as well as uh, information on the business report format and at Study Hub and, and the library website. Uh, so it's not a portfolio, it, it is a standard business report and it should be formatted as a standard business report. Um, it is worth 60% of a unit grade, so it's weighed uh, more heavily than the first assessment uh, and uh, as such there's a, a greater word length as well. Uh, so your word count is 3,600 words, uh, which is plus 10% as normal. Uh, so you'll be able to go over the word count by uh, 360 additional words. Uh, so you do have 3,960 words in total then. Uh, but that is just your introduction, your main body and your conclusion. Uh, everything else, including the reference list, cover page, table of contents, uh, your uh, executive summary and the appendices uh, are all excluded from the word count. So it's just introduction, main body and conclusion, uh, which are included in the word count. So looking to the assessment task itself. Uh, so we're focused again, as we said, on Luton Town residences. So this is using the same case study that we looked at in assessment one. Uh, so all of the work that you did uh, for assessment one, including the seminar worksheet uh, and writing the assessment itself, all of that understanding of the case study and that, that base of knowledge can absolutely be used again. We should be brought forward into this assessment as well. So even though there is no formal link, you can change your solution, you can change uh, you know, what uh, what what problems you're addressing in the case study. Uh, you can make all of those changes if you wish, but you don't have to uh, go through and, and, and learn a new case study. We are using the same. Uh, you've got two tasks in, uh, in the business report. 
Uh, number one, you're being asked to give reasoned recommendations uh, in order to address the problems in the case study, the OTR case study, uh, supported with high quality evidence. So whereas in assessment one, we were primarily, we were looking to analyze the case study, so in to understand the case study and apply operations management concepts, models and theories, um, here in assessment two, we're actually creating a reasoned recommendation. Uh, and the, the key wording in the assessment brief here is going to be with high quality evidence. And we're going to look at how we can do that when we look at the recommended or the suggested structure for uh, question one. The second question is to present a project plan, so a project management plan to implement the, uh, the reasoned recommendation. Uh, with the minimum requirement of including a WBS, a work breakdown structure, uh, a network diagram, a CPA, which is critical path analysis, a risk management plan, and a proposed budget. You will find uh, videos uh, on these, so tutorials on these as well. In the uh, Brio show on the project management support videos, we have gone through them in, in lectures as well. So you'll also find lecture slides uh, on these also. Uh, so you are not just presenting a proposal for a project as you did in assessment one, which is what a business case functionally is. Uh, you're actually going to be planning the project itself. Uh, so while a, a real project plan may be uh, actually quite a bit more complex and maybe you know it will include additional things such as a quality management plan and a configuration plan uh, for this assessment you do have a much smaller range of documents which you have to include so wbs network diagram cpa which is your time management plan a risk management plan uh, and a, a simple project budget or a proposed budget so if we go on to look at the information that should be used in this assessment which is a, a good starting point really um, we are moving away from considering just general google searches to be acceptable so we do want to split the information uh, into two separate sections and you will need significant amounts of citations from each so we want academic citations to support uh, key operations and project management concepts, theories and models. Uh, so a good place to start with this would be absolutely the, the reading list. Uh, you also have an additional document which breaks down chapter by chapter from the reading list on, uh, on different topics within both operations and project management. Uh, you also have some recommended, um, and this document is called Recommended Reading on the Brio Show. Uh, you also have some additional recommended sources in there as well, uh, including the APM, the Association of Project Management, a Harvard Business Review article, uh, and also a journal article. Uh, so you've got quite a bit to, to start with in terms of uh, academic citations. So just to, to clarify, by the way, the APM, the Association for Project Management, and the Harvard Business Review article are credible non-academic citations, but everything from uh, the various textbooks on the unit, uh, as well as a journal article, those are academic citations. So we need the academic citations uh, to support our application and discussion of operations and project management concept theories and models, uh, but we also want credible non-academic citations as well to support the discussion of the potential solution, platforms, and products. Um, and even though the APM is non-academic, so the Association for Project Management website is, is not an academic source, it's not been peer-reviewed, it is nonetheless very credible when it comes to uh, discussing um, certain project management uh, documentation that you're going to be producing as part of the project management plan. The things that we don't want to use uh, are these kinds of websites. So uh, Investopedia, businessballs.com, dictionary.com, please don't use them. Uh, Wikipedia is a, a wonderful resource for humanity, a massive distributed free encyclopedia. It's, it's brilliant. Um, but uh, we aren't able to identify who wrote individual Wikipedia articles and they can and often are changed very often and, and rapidly. So it is not suitable for... Um, so it is not suitable for any academic work. Uh, so please do not use these websites. We need to start developing uh, this approach to research and gathering credible sources 
to support our work uh, and these websites and, and, and websites like these are, are absolutely not credible. Um, they're not the kind of work that you want to, not the kind of sources you want to include in order to construct a serious argument, uh, you know, for, for any particular option for a business. Uh, what we can use are lots of internal university resources. So for journal articles, you'd go to Discover through the library website. So this is the, the portal to search for and find uh, academic um, research papers and, and journal articles. Uh, and that's going to form a large part of what should be used in order to support your your work in this assessment. As well as this, you have the library catalog. Again, you can find this through the university library website, lrweb.beds.ac.uk. Uh, uh, and if you need help with using either of these, remember you can also contact the academic librarian. So you can search for the academic liaison librarians on the university website. You can also uh, look through the academic guide on the Brio show for, for additional information, uh, as well as some additional uh, sources of support through uh, the, the Study Hub uh, Centre on the library website. There's two additional resources uh, made available through the library catalogue that you can just search for within the library catalogue that I would highly recommend. So Newsbank will give you access to lots of uh, sources which tend to be credible non-academic sources which are locked behind paywalls. So if you try and find an article on uh, Harvard Business Review, uh, which is a, an excellent, excellent um, non-academic publication for, for business topics, uh, or indeed through an article on the Financial Times uh, or, or the Telegraph. Uh, these will be locked behind paywalls, but you don't need to pay to access them. The university already subscribes to them. So you can uh, search for Newsbank and log in through the library catalogue, uh, and then you'll have access to, to all of these paywalled and, and, um, and paid-for uh, news sources. Uh, if you're looking for definitions, then Credo is an excellent resource as well. You can search for this again through the library catalogue. Uh, and Credo will uh, give you access to a massive range of encyclopedias and other credible sources. So if you're looking to define a term or you're looking for any kind of definition or, or a good citation or explanation, uh, don't go to dictionary.com or, or do a general web search. Uh, use Credo. You'll get a, a much higher quality citation from that and, and your work will be uh, all the stronger for it as well. Uh, in terms of other credible websites, particularly for uh, you know our, our non-academic, uh, credible, high quality sources, uh, you can use uh, Harvard Business Review, as I've mentioned, is is, is a great resource. Uh, you can search for articles uh, through the uh, through the Harvard Business Review website, um, but you can then, if it's locked behind a paywall, you can go through Newsbank or you can just search for on on, on Discover, uh, and you'll be able to access the full text. Theconversation.com is another excellent website, so it's uh, designed for academics to present their research to a non-academic audience. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice that journal articles tend to be written in a very dry, technical manner. It can be quite difficult to plough through lots of, uh, of journal articles. So if you want to get a quick understanding about a particular topic or if you want to understand about particular research that's relevant to, to, to you, and there'll be, there'll be lots of, of, uh, of relevant stuff on the conversation uh, about uh, COVID-19, remote working, lockdown, changes in communication... Um, then that's a really good resource. Uh, again, it's not an academic uh, source, but it is a credible non-academic source. Um, if you're going to find news articles, then please don't just do general searches and wind up with uh, articles from the Daily Mail or The Sun. Uh, use credible uh, news sources, so The Guardian, BBC, Times, the Telegraph, uh, The Financial Times, uh, The Independent, Sky News. These things are, are far more credible. And lastly, if you are going to use Wikipedia to get a quick understanding of something, 
um, then please don't reference Wikipedia. Uh, but at the bottom of uh, of at least well sourced Wikipedia articles, you'll find a, a long list of citations that they've used. Uh, so some of those are going to be credible. Some of them are not going to be credible. Uh, but you could use that list of citations, read the source, make an evaluation whether it's credible or not, and then you could reference that source. Uh, please don't uh, actually just reference the Wikipedia article. Um, it's 